policies. We know uh, Russia is a despicable uh, government. Uh, we, um, our heart goes out to, uh, to the Ukrainians for uh, all their losses. It's, um, I mean, when you see that Putin is sitting there wanting to kill women and children, it's just despicable. But if you were thinking about it just from the standpoint of American security, um, how important is this to American security that we make sure that the Ukrainians win and Russia loses? And if the opposite happened, how adverse would that be on our own personal and our own security, which is our primary role up here uh, in Congress is provide for the security of Americans? Thank you, Senator. Senator, I believe if you can defeat a strategic adversary not using any U.S. troops, you're at the acme of professionalism because letting the Ukrainians defeat that, it takes, an op it takes a strategic adversary off the table and then we can focus where we should be focusing against our primary adversary, which is China at this time. Uh, and I, and I, the concern I've got is I don't think we need to put American troops there. And if we fail in this, we may have to fight another European war, which would be the third time. And, and I don't think we should do that or need to do that as well. General, why, um, I mean, I think we have to worry about, I think I, we need to make sure Russia loses, in my opinion. We need to make sure the Ukrainians win. Why haven't, uh, why hasn't Germany stepped up? I mean, this is, this is not, you know, I don't know how close, how many miles it is uh, from the Ukrainian border to Germany, um, but why hasn't Germany stepped up and done its part on lethal aid? I mean, it seems to me that they should be, have a bigger concern than we do. Um, I believe Germany is, is, uh, is a non-player in Europe right now. I think you look more toward the Poles as being the major player. While it's a very obviously important country, I, I think they're, they're feckless. They just haven't supported as they should support. They should be all in in this fight uh, because it is, they've seen the experience of us coming over in two years and actually defeating Germany in two wars. Um, it, it, they just, the leadership they have gotten has not displayed the leadership you would expect from, from a wartime leader. Do you think that, uh, I mean, there are a lot of people believe that we, we can negotiate a settlement with Putin. Is there any type of settlement you believe that Putin, that Putin, one, would be interested in doing, and then two, that would be worth anything he's, he agreed to? Senator, I believe, it, and I believe the two experts to my right would say this, the only thing that Putin understands is power and strength, and you have to basically put your knee on his throat. And how you do that is defeat the only thing that really counts for Putin, and that's the Russian army in Ukraine. Defeat that army, and I believe Putin falls. Is there any, you know, a lot of um, what we hear is that we've spent a lot of money. Um, Germany's not, you know, they've not done the lethal aid. They've done other types of aid. But, but is, how can we quantify to the American public the importance of this? Because, you know, some people, like in my state, they, they ask me why are we, we spent over 100, or committed, not spent, but committed $100 billion. And is there a way that we can make sure the Biden administration does what I think most, a lot of us believe in, is we need to go all in now rather than piecemeal. Senator, I believe it's, it's fight there rather than here. It's better that we have to fight an adversary overseas and not, not use U.S. troops to, to do so. And the Ukrainians don't want U.S. troops. Everyone I talked to said we can fight this fight as long as we get the kit to do it. And I think if, uh, if we don't, we need to tell the American people you can basically walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. We should be addressing all of those issues that we have, both here in the United States and overseas. And I think that balance can be displayed. And I think that needs to be done, which I believe through presidential leadership. I think the president should pick up the phone if he has to and call President Putin. You know, even right now, when you see Lloyd Austin, Secretary of Defense, they will not pick up the phone and talk to him, nor will the Chinese. And I think that's a huge mistake. So uh, what's, the, uh, what's the takeaway for Xi right now with regard to how the Biden administration has acted and how, uh, when they, you look at, you know, part of the American public uh, questions what we're doing there. Uh, what's, what's Xi's takeaway? Well, the huge tech takeaway is that we're, we're in a drift. We're not displaying presidential leadership. You know, what I mean by presidential leadership is being very, very definitive on what it's going to take to win this fight. We're saying a backseat and letting Ukraine drive this decision. This decision is a free world decision of how we fight and how we win on the battlefield. And I believe presidential leadership does count. Decisive leadership does count. And Putin needs to understand that decisive leadership and that he is actually fighting us and the free world in this endeavor. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Chairman.